forget the art degree and forget the apprenticeship. Sarah Ewis Green says, if you're making art, you're an artist. And that's the thought behind her book, You're an Artist, Assignments to Spark Creation. Hi, Sarah. It's good to have you on our show today. Thanks so much for joining us. Hi, thanks for having me. So, uh, congratulations on the book, by the way. So you're giving art assignments to people in this book and you're calling them artists just because they are creating something. So please tell me about the philosophy behind this. Is it enough just to be creating something to be called an artist? I think so. I mean, I think when people think about what an artist is, they tend to think you have to be sort of struck and inspired by grand visions in order to make art. And in my work as a curator, uh, I met so many artists who are normal people. They're gifted people uh, with many talents, but a lot of times they just sort of sit down and do the work. And I've found that making art is oftentimes more about paying attention than it is having a particular skill set, like being an amazing drafts person. Um, and so I just, I wanna communicate to people the reality of being an artist uh, and that it is something that is more in your grasp than you might think. Mm. Okay, so you are actually very well educated and you come from, I mean, creme de la creme of the art world. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. Why did you come up with a book like this? When you talk about the reality of being an artist and the reality of being a spectator, really, I wonder what kind of a, 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 a thought process is behind this. Well, when I was working in a museum curator position um, a number of years ago, I just kept feeling that, like there was more I could be doing to get people in the right mindset before they got to the museum so that they had sort of the right mindset in order to approach the artworks. And for me, I'm someone who learns by doing um, and by getting to know an artist through an assignment, each of the assignments in the book is derived from one artist or a group of artists who work together who came up with the assignment based on the way that they make work. And I find that if you sort of enter that mindset of an artist for a little bit and try on their way of making for a while, it can make you a little more open-minded um, to the vast number of ways that art's being made today. It is so much more than painting or sculpture or drawing. And through stepping through these exercises or assignments, I think you can gain a greater appreciation for the sometimes odd way that art is being made today and also have a really fulfilling experience in the meantime. Mm -hmm. But then, I mean, I think a lot of people would say that especially contemporary art is pretentious or just intimidating when you go to a, a huge museum or, or, or a gallery. So what, what do you think the art world is doing wrong or what can be done better in order to tackle this? bad reputation? Well, I think that the art market, at least pre-COVID, pre uh, was extremely inflated. And there are so many mechanisms in place in museums and galleries that are meant to repel you, that are meant to communicate that this is special, special things for special people, that art is a luxury good. And I think that it can be easy if you're just reading the news or reading the art news, to forget that art is just about making and that we humans have always made art and we will continue to make art and that it's not just about producing luxury goods. And so I think museums can do a better job of putting real faces uh, behind not only the art that's being made, but the way that it's being received, like the people who are having individual reactions to the art. So I think, you know, we tend to make art and put it into these perfect white cubes and expect you to appreciate it. But for me, art gets better when I know who made it, when I understand that it was in a dirty, messy studio before. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in this book and through this project, I'm trying to show the ways that art tends to come out of our real life experiences, that Fritz Haig figured out a new way of making rugs when he had a bunch of old bed sheets and t-shirts that he wasn't using before. And then he worked collaboratively with a group of people to make this giant hand crocheted rug that's really a symbol of a community. So I think um, 
I think museums do try hard and many of them succeed at showing that art is made by actual human beings, uh, but I think it's a <laughs> continual effort and, um, and I'm, I'm excited to see them continue to adapt. Mm -hmm. And um, let's just talk about the book for, for a second. What kind of assignments are there? I mean, I just had a look at the book, but for people who haven't, uh, you really don't, re I mean, it, they don't really require um, equipment, do they? No, they don't. I mean, some some will ask you to have a camera, which a, a lot of us have on our phones nowadays. So one, for example, is offered by the artist Lauren Zoll, and she asks you to take a picture of a screen that is off. And this sounds like an insane assignment. And when I first um, heard this idea from this artist, I thought, what, what, what is this going to be? And then I actually got out my camera and started taking pictures of screens that were off. And I realized that an off screen is actually, of course, reflecting what's around it. And even if it has dust and scratches, that actually can create a really interesting image. So that's just one. But another one in, in the book is paper weaving, which mm -hmm. you could do with what you have at home, just some scrap paper or some old mail or some old magazines. You can use that as the basis to make a very simple but potentially beautiful paper weaving. And I think, you know, there are plenty of artists who are still making wonderful paintings and drawings. And a lot of times that does involve years of training. Um, but there are other ways that you can make very meaningful, very important art without years and years of training. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people are doing uh, this at home all around the world at the moment uh, because of the coronavirus quarantine. How do you think this will, I mean, what kind of a legacy will this leave us with? I think that we, for a number of years or decades after this time, um, I think we'll see a remarkable amount of creative output that's come from it. I mean, I think being creative now, we have to be creative to get to the grocery store. We have to be creative to sort of rework our lives <laughs> around this catastrophe. And I think if you assume, which you are, that you're already creative, then it can be not that huge of a step to make things. All right, Sarah, you're a screen. It was good to talk to you. Thanks so much. So good to talk to you too.